John Carpenter's The Fog contains one of the great opening scenes in horror film history. And one of the reasons that the scene is so powerful is that it effectively captures a sense of childlike imagination and wonder. One of the precursors or forerunners to this scene is the opening scene of The Night of the Hunter, 1955, in which Lillian Gish's character tells a story to a group of children against a starry backdrop, and their disembodied heads float against the stars as they listen to details of the story. This really captures that kind of -of out-of-body experience of being a child and hearing a great story. Now, John Carpenter's The Fog will capture this same mood, but in a way that's much more subtle and more creative. He's going to set this story in an actual realistic location. We're around a campfire. But we're going to seem to exist beyond the campfire because of the way that the creative way in which it's shot and edited. The first detail that we're going to emphasize in the shot is a pocket watch. We're very oriented as far as time is concerned. It's 11.55, that's important to the story. But space is a little more ambiguous. When the camera starts to turn to the left, these characters seem to kind of swim into the frame because it's so dark, the lighting is so dark. And then a disembodied hand will come in to close that pocket watch before a cut introduces the storyteller. We still don't know where we are. Everything is lit very low, and we've got these kind of close shots. We don't know where we are in relation to the other characters. That's about to change here when we get it, we're going to get a cut to a wider shot. Um, but this scene is going to kind of vacillate between giving us information and withholding information. Here we get this first shot where we've got the children in the left pocket of the screen. We've got the fire in the middle. In the back right pocket, we've got the storyteller. Um, now notice in a second he's going to say suddenly out of the night the fog rolled in. When he says suddenly, we're going to get this dramatic crash zoom. Not a smooth zoom, but a jagged zoom. It's very jarring. So we got... Boom, right there. That is the children internalizing that detail. When he says suddenly, that's how the children hear suddenly. We're, we're having kind of a visual representation of the, ex- the psychological experience of being a child listening to a, a great story like this. Now we've noticed here most of these shots are going to be the campfire is what's lighting the this, this scene from below, this kind of flickering light, and everything around it is, is dark. We're about to get a cut to the side. We've got this side cut of uh, one of these children in particular. This is Stevie Wayne's son. So we've got the shot from the side of him, and then we've got a matching shot from the side of John Houseman. This means that we're prioritizing this child now in the story. We're going to cut back to him to see him again. So this is kind of a a solipsistic technique. This kind of captures that sense of being a child and forgetting where you are and forgetting about the people around you uh, as you listen to a great story. So here the cameras, notice the characters around him are blurred out as the camera kind of slowly revolves around him. He's forgotten about everybody else around him as being sucked completely into the story. Not because the other characters aren't important. Those other children will come into the frame again in a moment. Um, But right now, he's giving us that temporary experience of being one of those children and forgetting completely about the other children around you. Now we've got a shot of John Houseman again, and he's about to say, tell us a detail about the campfire. That's very important. So these ghosts are going to come back to try to find a campfire um, and seek revenge on the people who, who made this campfire that led them astray and caused the crash years ago, right? When he says search for the campfire, we get, boom, a reaction shot to that, emphasizing the vulnerability of all these children who realize they're sitting around a campfire, right? So suddenly they seem vulnerable um, based on the details in the story. And then as the clock strikes 12, the camera's gonna move up. And because the lighting is so low, John Houseman's character is going to seem to sink out of the frame when the camera goes up. So he just kind of seems to sink into another world as we drift up. So this whole time we've been very anchored in time. We know we started at 11.55 and we ended at midnight. But we don't really always know where we are spatially. We seem to kind of exist at the campfire, but then we also seem to kind of exist beyond the campfire. Um, We exist in this kind of fantastical dream world here. And then as the camera comes up, It brings the beach into view, and then John Carpenter's The Fog will come up. A brilliant, um, brilliantly designed uh, use of the credit there. So this is a a really interesting way to shoot the scene in a way that gives us the experience of a child listening to a story with wonder. 